Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at Nave, which is my follow-up to Maze Rats. It is a short, uh, very fast, very easy to understand OSR game, but unlike Maze Rats, it is highly compatible with typical OSR materials. So if you have a lot of OSR monster manuals and adventures and dungeons and so on, it's going to be highly compatible. You're not really going to have to do much modifying at all, really. It also has a number of other advantages. Uh, for example, it is uh, completely classless. So if you enjoy that, then this could be a really great game for you. Um, character customization is mostly based on the items that you carry. Here's a picture of the character sheet here. So you have item slots here, up to 20 of them, and these can increase uh, over time how many slots you have. And depending on whether you are holding weapons or armor or you know thieves tools or spell books and so on, that's gonna determine what kind of character you are. This makes it fairly easy for you to switch up the type of character that you want to play based on changing out your inventory. It also uses optional player facing roles, which means that it's very easy to switch between players doing all of the rolling or GM and players rolling, depending on um, your preferred style of play. It uses the copper standard for all of the prices, which I like. It has a list of 100 levelless spells. And some of my favorite aspects of this is that it is completely uh, Creative Commons um, international license, meaning that anyone is allowed to take this game apart and hack it and modify it and do whatever they like with it, as long as they give attribution. And to make that even easier, what I've done is whenever you download this uh, book from DriveThruRPG, and I'll put a link down in the description below, um, you'll find that it comes with the Word document that I used to make this. So it's very easy for you to use that to create your own version of Nave. I strongly encourage and I even expect people to use this as a framework and to create the type of game that is perfect for them. That's what I do with all of my games, and I wanted to encourage that in anyone who looks at Nave. It also comes with some uh, designer commentary. So one thing I really liked in books is when I can see what the designer was thinking when they wrote particular rules. So I've added designer's notes. So we have a character creation done in four simple steps here. You roll your six stats randomly. Now, one thing that I've done with my stats that's a little bit different is that instead of having abilities and bonuses, you have a defense and a bonus. This works similar to Shadow of the Demon Lord if you're aware of that game. Basically, you have a defense that goes from 11 through 20, and then you have an, a bonus that's related to that. So if your defense is 12, then your bonus is plus two. So those are always linked together. And your defense is kind of like armor class. So if you're in a strength competition with someone, they would try and roll above your defense score. Whereas if you were using your strength for something, then you would use your strength bonus. Um, so basically it works like armor class. And then even your armor has a defense and a bonus, depending on whether it's all going to be player facing or DM and players rolling. I have um, examples in the text for how that is exactly going to work. So you can roll for most of your equipment, similar to Maze Rats. This makes things very quick to create a character. Of course, if you want to go shopping, you can go shopping. Uh, I have a list of all the different things that you can buy with prices for everything. And we have randomizing, uh, you can randomize your traits, your physique, face, skin, hair, clothing, and so on. Randomizing all your gear. This gets you up and running really, really fast. You can make characters in like five minutes. Moving on. We have our basic rules for playing the game. Uh, going through how item slots work. Item slots are the character customization slots of the game, essentially. We have how saving throws work, which are like skill checks or ability checks. And the target number is always, uh, you have to roll higher than 15 or you have to roll 16 or higher. So when since your uh, ability scores, or sorry, your bonuses go from plus one up to plus 10, and you're always trying to roll a 16 or higher, that means that starting characters are gonna have about a 25% chance of success since their ability scores or their bonuses will be fairly low. And then by the time they get to level 10, which is the maximum, then they will usually have a plus 10 in some of their bonuses which will give them a 75% chance of success. So you're always gonna be within those limits, roughly. And that mirrors uh, what we see in the saving throw systems in old school D&D. So I wanted the ability scores to mirror that. We have some basic rules for combat, pretty straightforward, the, although it has um, examples of how to do player facing roles. We have the basic system for doing stunts and uh, using advantage in combat to do more interesting things than just, you know, you hit, I hit. 
We have an easy little system for quality of weapons, so weapons and armor can break down. Um, and your basic OSR rules, including some rules for how to adapt monsters to Nave. Like I said, it's very straightforward. Most things you are not going to have to change at all, really. Um, advancement, you can use whatever system you want. I have a very simple system here where you're trying to get 1,000 XP, uh, a little bit like the new Pathfinder system. But you can, of course, just swap in a gold for XP system if that's what you want. It won't really change anything. One of my favorite parts of the whole game is the magic system. I really like weird magic systems, um, as you may have learned from looking at Maze Rats. And how this works is, okay, so when I've looked at old OSR games, there's a, a number of things that have always seemed weird to me. Um, a, the way that spell levels don't correspond to character levels. That's always seemed weird to me. Well, it works that way now. So basically, if you are a level three character in Nave, you can cast um, spells that are up to level three. So that keeps things really simple. Um, also, how spell slots work has always seemed weird, and it's varied so much from edition to edition. So in Nave, how it works is your spell slots are your item slots. Basically, if you pick up um, spell books, you can find them as treasure or loot throughout the world. You simply stick them in your item slots. And the more spell books that you're carrying, the less other things that you can carry. So your equipment is your spell slots. You want to be a full-on wizard, you're going to have to take up most of your equipment just hauling around your mobile library because each spell book is a spell. You don't have one spell book just full of written down stuff. Um, I really like that visually, and it's really fun mechanically as well. You can use whatever you want for spells, really. If you want to use your classic D&D spells, there's a lot of uh, free lists of those on the internet that you can use. Um, you can also roll up random spells using Maze Rats, if that's what you prefer. But I also have 100 level list spells um, ready to go here, which um, alter in power based on the level of the character. So they simply grow as you grow. That's basically it for Nave. It's a simple, straightforward little rule set. Um, I've been playtesting it for quite some time, about a year now. And I know that most of my patrons have been doing so as well. And they've said that they've been having a really great time. It's a great system for kids. Um, most of my systems work well with kids because that's who I normally play with um, in terms of running games. It has to be very quick, very easy to understand. That's what the sort of thing that I focus on. Um, but it's also a really great framework for just running classless games. If you want things to be really simple and not have to teach people a lot of the fiddly little rules that come around with almost every edition of D&D. Uh, Nave is designed to be very straightforward and intuitive in terms of how all the systems work together. So if this looks like something that you would enjoy, um, head down to the description below. I'll put a link there. You can head over to Drive Through RPG and get it for yourself. Remember that if you do get it, um, please leave feedback. Tell me what you think. And especially if you create your own versions of this, if you hack it or extend it in any way, I would also love to hear about that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe. Uh, thanks for checking out my channel, and I'll see you guys later.